I had a few questions on the channel about Wi-Fi and robotics specifically. Um, Wi-Fi is really neat to use with any microcontroller or PC because it's pretty much the application is limitless. I mean, Wi-Fi is everywhere. It's a really good protocol. With microcontrollers, it's a more of a fairly recent sensor or, or I shouldn't say sensor, device development. The ones that I use, like on this robot from several years ago, that have been on several features of my videos, is um, the Async Labs We Shield. This is the 1.0 version. This robot also has the 1.0 version. I did a Google research, and um, I think Async Labs has gone under because I can't find anything about them anymore. The documentation and the libraries are still online. They're on GitHub. I'll show you that stuff later. But Arduino actually has official Wi-Fi Shield now, so I'd recommend learning that, picking one of those up because their documentation is amazing. But other than that, the advice I have for Wi-Fi, specifically for robotics, is to design a normal robot. This robot, when it was first built, was just an autonomous robot with Arduino. And, you know, just it's, Robotics is robotics. I mean, you're going to need a way to move around. This one uses servo motors. Um, you can use DC motors in a motor controller. One thing I do recommend in your robot design, in general, is the potentiometer for adjustments. I'll show you real quick. Uh, this is continuous continuous rotation servo like wheels, but there's going to be um, it's on right here. There's going to be a little adjustment, a little tiny uh, Phillips head potentiometer in there. So when you send your PWM code to the servo, which is stop when the horn's not supposed to move at all, sometimes it moves a little bit. So you got to tweak that value by just putting a screwdriver in there that fits, and just turn it a little bit so it stops. Over time, they will go out of sync, and uh, you'll have to redo them. And then, besides the motor system to transport, there's a, some type of sensor, usually optional, but usually. This is an infrared distance sensor, and it's mounted on a servo that pans around so I can take several measurements without actually moving the robot itself. That's basic Robotics 101. Um, once you have your transportation and your sensing stuff down, I would just, in Arduino, as an autonomous robot, I would just take a look at your shield documentation, which we'll show you, and it'll tell you what pins are being used by the shield itself that you can't use for devices. So on, on this application, for example, where you see my connections, these are pins that are not being used by the shield. Therefore, I've got my three servos. You know, the IR, pan servo, left and right, and then down here on analog zero, I'm using the infrared sensor data. You know, pins usually, I think it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are used by the Wii Shield. And I think digital 2, which can be switched to digital 8 for interrupt, that's all in the documentation we'll show you later. So really that's the only difference between robotics and using Wi-Fi, is just like any shield knowing what pins the shield uses so you don't use those pins in your project for your robot. So we'll take a look at the software now. The Wii Shield from Async Labs can still be found online. This is from shieldlist.org website. This will show you the basic information you need to know. Most importantly in the design phase are the pins that are being used by the shield. This right here illustrates the digital 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and digital 2 are in use by the shield, which means you cannot use those pins for a sensor or motors or anything else you're plugging into your Arduino robot. So, as you can see, there's a note. There's always a little bit of, with these shields, there tends to be a little bit of a difference and a little optional. You know, digital 2 right here is used for an interrupt. It can be switched to digital 8 if required. So if you have some kind of application where you need to use 2 and you can't reroute to 8, you're able to do that on the shield. And there's actually a little jumper on the shield that says, you know, int, zero, interrupt, 0 or 8. So you can switch that. You can actually make 8 not used can't use 8 and you'll, the shield will use that for the interrupt or 2, it doesn't matter. Um, it says right here in the note D9, digital 9, is the status LED. There's actually a red LED on the shield that lights up when you're connected to the access point. Well, that's an optional use for the shield, so you could still use that if you need to. My rule of thumb is I don't design any circuits, anything that uses any of the pins that any shield uses. That way, just to keep things in the clear. Uh, looks like there's a little demo video on this website. And that's about it. Don't link to the library, which I did find on Google. It's on GitHub. This is Async Labs, the WeShield library. 
So as you can see, three, four years ago this was updated. This is very old hardware. You can download this uh, repository and add it to your library on Arduino IDE just like normal. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and Google it. It says the Arduino tells you how to do that. And it tells you the details in the README. And a lot of it is just learning, reading what's here. Um, the one I was mentioning before, the app configuration.h, the header file, this is the one you have to modify based on the software that you're using. Right here, define app web server. So there's the built-in web server. If you're using the web server code and the web server API, this is fine. Now, if you want to use the socket app through TCP sockets, you have to comment this line out and uncomment app sock app. That's using sockets. Here's UDP. We server is a unique async labs um, web server functionality. Web client, if you're actually using this as a client to connect to a server. So you have to be familiar. This is one of the biggest things that held me up when I was learning the, the, this shield. You gotta comment out the one you're not using, uncomment the one you are using, and then program in your Arduino sketch for the specific one. This robot that I showed earlier uses the socket app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. This is my code that's available on the website. Uh, there'll be a link down there. You have your sketch, and you're including the Wii Shield header. Um, when you do that, it's going to include another source code, sockapp.c, because I'm using the socket app feature. So now you have this code that's already pretty much been written, I've modified. I didn't take out the original code, I commented it out. This was what was already in there. You know, you load this up, go ahead and, and you know, verify it, and that'll tell you right there if your appconf.h file is not right, it's gonna it's not gonna know socket app if it's on Wii server or something else. So know to change it there. But just just load up something basic, just flash an LED, you no, know, just set obviously I should have said this before, but you need to set your access point information and your IP information. This is my test access point, so it's unsecured, makes it fast to connect, keeps it simple, just a static IP, everything. And this is my code we'll go over in a little while, but just just don't even use it. You know, this Wi-Fi run's got to be here for the library, it says so in the library. Just use your loop to flash an LED or something very, very basic and simple on the Arduino just to see it work, just see how the SOC app works. For this robot specifically, the modifications I made in the socket app is that it sends the words CMD and a new line to whatever connected to it, which is the PC. There's a Python script I used for the user input to go across the network into the robot. Once this command line is established and the user types a command and presses enter, it reads that into the variable for which this sketch will work on. Um, in the setup, it says in the, in the library documentation, Wi-Fi dot in it, you know, initiate Wi-Fi. This is all the servos, you know what I mean? This is this is my variables that I'm using for my robot, for my two-wheel robot and IR sensor. That's going to change. Very, very simple programming. In fact, these are just if statements. Could do select case to make it a little bit fancier. But what I'm doing, the first thing I do after it runs the Wi-Fi routine, is I'm reading into a, a variable on the sketch, the information that came from the socket app. So when someone types the number one, I'm reading it into a variable for the sketch. So the Arduino could say, oh, if it if they typed one, then let's go ahead and do the move forward routine. And then we're going to set the variable back just for to nothing for my code. And, you know, and it, you scroll down, I've got some routines, and that's where my motor servo control is, you know, turn left, turn right. Well, it's going to call move forward. For my servos, these are the PWM values for the left and right to move forward. Based on the orientation of your servo motors and the robot, this is basic robot, this has nothing to do with Wi-Fi. You know, you write these routines. You make the robot work autonomously like normal. This is auto roaming, it's autonomous navigation routines. You make the robot, design it, and build it just like a normal robot, and then the Wi-Fi is just the addition. It's saying, hey, I'm going to get a variable that is actually containing a command from a remote machine and then I'm going to use these statements to act on that stuff on what actually came in here that's that's all it is and the library the hard part is learning the libraries because each one's unique I wouldn't recommend this one since it's obsolete but the Arduino one's going to have the same feature 
it's I mean it might not be two different programs and the things or the libraries won't work the exact same but that's basically it I mean it's very very simple but my my advice would be get an autonomous robot designed built like normal and then when you research and figure out what shield you're using you know make sure you consult the documentation make sure you read the source code make sure you read you know the actual um, readme files the source code files and learn what's going on here your reference here's the Arduino official Arduino Wi-Fi shield which I would recommend it tells you right here 10 11 12 13 pins they're used for communication sevens used for handshake there's an optional SD card so four, you're not going to use four. You can't use it for a device. You either pull it higher or low for yes, yes, I'm going to use the SD or no, I'm not going to. But it's still taken up. So you've got all your analogs. You've got the digital pins that aren't being used. You, that's that's what you're going to build your robot off of. And this documentation is very thorough. It's very in depth. It's got everything you need to know right from the Arduino website. They even have the Wi-Fi library. Here's the software routines. When you import this library. Here's your classes. Here's where everything's gonna, you know, SSID right here. Gets the SSID from the current network. You know what I mean? Here's an example. So all the codes here just take things step by step for your robot, for your application. Different server classes, client classes, UDP. Full examples. Full Twitter is in here. I mean, look at this. This is amazing. Scan networks. You can scan all the networks in the range. I mean that let's just take a look at this. It shows you the hardware, the example code, which probably comes up with the library, it'll probably be in your sketchbook under examples. And just modify it for what you need. Other than that, there is the Python script, which let me uh pull that out. And this is where things get really unique. For this is the control program. I like to use Python. I just I, I like it. Um, and I, I cut this up into two different scripts. I'm you know you import this control script, but this is the real Wi-Fi part. You import the socket library in um, Python. Give the IP address and the port that you set up in the Arduino. Now I've got you know I can send data from the script to the Wi-Fi shield and here's one where I do different motor angles and conversions this is the main program that's this is all USB joystick code you don't have to use that but here's my main you can use the keyboard commands all you do is raw input right in hey if I press one the robots gonna move forward because it's gonna take that one it's gonna send out one over the network to the we shield robot who will then read one and move forward this is the sky's the limit with this program as well as you know Python and how things are working. See if I typed in six, it would hand control over to all the joystick code. That's up here. So I have a USB joystick connected and based on the movement of that joystick, it's going to send forward, backward, left, right, and it even moves the IR servo. Seven is for the Explorer. If you've seen that video, it's on my YouTube channel, the Arduino Explorer board, it's a gamepad board. If I hit seven, it gives control to that. It's connected over USB. Right here, it reads from the Explorer. The Explorer just sends. I read from the Explorer. Hey, there's something from the Explorer. Okay, what is it? Whatever it is, send it out. So if I want to move forward with the Explorer, I make the Explorer output one. And then the control sends one to this IP address in this port, which is the Wii Shield. And it reads one into its variable and it moves forward. Uh, that's really it. This is all on the website. Um, I hope this helps a little bit. Like I said, it'd be better if I actually had an Arduino official Wi-Fi shield to actually show you. Because, again, this library is old. This is just the sockets. Again, there's web server. There's all kinds. In fact, I might even still have an old web server one. We shield. Client test. What's this one? So this is where it's... It's still using the socket, isn't it? But it's this is the feature of the Wii Shield actual client. It tells you right here in the socket app .h includes the UIP everything that you need 
in order to get it running. It takes a little while. This actually prints out serial from the Arduino. Oh, it's commented out. This was written years ago. I'm not exactly sure. This sends back the status of the digital pin 5. So I must have had a sensor on here. So instead of just waiting for communication from a PC, what I wanted to do is this was like the, the Wi-Fi shield was actually serving the status of this pin out over the network. And the PC or the other device was connecting to it as a client and, or, um, and trying to read that information. Hey, you know, what's going on with Digital 5? You know what I mean? Sending data looks like some login, a little string of characters probably right here. Just to test it out, just to see what's going on. And it's just incremental. This is a socket app. This is just like the Wii Server one. A lot of comments telling you what's going on. You can modify things that you want. This is how I was learning to read that variable from the network and then perform actions on it. Digital right, 8, high and low. Turn to pry an LED on. So I hope this helps people that are worrying about or worrying, wondering about, you know, Wi-Fi on the Arduino, specifically for robotics. My biggest thing that I said before is just learn your shield. What pins you can't use that are in use. Design your bot normally, autonomously, and just keep in mind, just use the pins like here that you can use that aren't taken up by the shield. Especially analogs. Analogs are usually rarely taken up by a shield. These are some good sensors here. And then go from there. Learn the software part next. And with Arduino, it's well documented. Really, really well documented. How to connect IP address ports and examples on how to do it. Just change this for your needs. And you should have a really, really cool Wi-Fi robot up and running in no time. So I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.